So, um, you know, feel free again in the uh, chat window, keep the dialogue going there. We can answer questions and all that. But um, again, great to have you all on the session today. Five Knowledge Centers, Disrupting Leadership Development, Coaching and Team Coaching. Again, my name is Christopher Lowe. I'm joined with Pim Harder and Eric Kohner. This is a really fun project that we cooked up about a year and a half ago. And um, we're going to be back today sharing a little bit about the evolution of this. We've done some webinars in the past on this. And uh, periodically, we come back and do webinars to introduce folks to this exciting coaching framework and some stories of how we've been applying it out in the world. So um, to give you a little bit of a flavor, just briefly, again, we have on the call today, Eric. Eric is a longstanding coach, been a master coach and in the coaching field for more than 25 years. He's a director of leadership and coaching and the West Coast lead at the Team Coaching Zone. He's also been a senior instructor at the Coaches Training Institute for a long time. I think he was the second person trained in CTI, so it kind of goes back to the beginning. We have Pim Harder in the Netherlands. He's also a co-active coach and also trained in the ORSC uh, approach. And he is a chief learning officer and head of the Netherlands country office for the Team Coaching Zone. And I'm Christer Loma, an organizational psychologist by training. And uh, I founded the Team Coaching Zone almost three years ago. And uh, I like to think of myself uh, as being in the space of really around innovation and creativity. And I am a podcaster as well. So one of the things we, when the, the, the three of us get together as a team, we like to check in using the Five Knowledge Centers framework and use that as a way to start off, kick off our team meetings. And uh, we do that by sort of just checking in on which knowledge center is alive and well for us or which one we're coming from as we enter into the meeting. So I'm going to model that here. And as we go through the, the session today, you're going to get much more familiar with this framework, but we want to make this as experiential as possible. And we have a couple of ways we're going to do that. We'll provide a, a roadmap for you in a minute. But uh, so again, I'm Krista, and uh, the Knowledge Center I'm most connected to coming into today is my gut, and uh, this is really the seat of intuition, <clears throat> and I say that because it's been a, a prolific morning. I released a podcast earlier today, was on a great uh, sales call with Eric uh, with a company in Europe, and uh, I guess just in my gut, I'm feeling uh, you know, good about this fall and you know, the, the horizon of business and all that, and so... That's sort of, I think, the knowledge center that I'm uh, most connected to coming into today's call. So excited to be on the webinar. Eric, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, I'm actually in two, two knowledge centers. One is my heart. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling really uh, uh, grateful. I have a lot of gratitude right uh, this second for everybody that's showing up for the webinar. Uh, I'm also in my groin. Because I'm like really passionate right this second. As, as Christer uh, mentioned, we just got off a really great sales call. And I'm just like also very psyched to be on this webinar right now. I feel like I've gotten a second win. I've been, I've been up since 6 in the morning uh, doing work. Uh, and uh, right before I got on, I was a little bit like, whoa. Like I've been on Zoom too long. But uh, I'm back and ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Eric. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm uh, I'm in two knowledge centers at the moment. So one is really the groin. It's all about the, the the passion. I'm really passionate to be here, and there's also the hat. I'm a bit anxious. You know, will I find the right words today uh, to address what I'm really passionate about? So that's um, I think that's that's what's here for me now. Okay. We won't ask all of you to check in because I think that will we'll, we'll take up most of our time. But feel free if, if you <laughs> so care to do so, if you, which knowledge center, if you're familiar with the framework, you're, uh, where you are in today um, coming into the session. And if you're not familiar with the framework, you're going to get to know it by the end. So I'm going to give you a little visual roadmap for what to expect during this session today. We're actually going to start off. I'm going to lead you guys in a brief guided meditation and visualization using the knowledge center framework here in a moment. Uh, just to get you present and get you centered. We're then going to share a bit of a timeline of the history of the last 18 months from origin concept to where we've kind of cooked this, uh, this project and this, this program. Uh, we're going to introduce you to the framework and walk you through just uh, very at a high level about the framework. We're then going to actually invite one of you to volunteer to be coached by Eric today. So if uh, you want to get some coaching on something important in your life or, or just something that you'd like to get some coaching on, you're going to get a chance to experience five knowledge center coaching 
little 10 minute demo. We wanna share some resources on where you can learn more podcasts, blogs, videos, other stuff on the Five Knowledge Center framework. And then we're gonna end with a bit of storytelling. So we're gonna do our best to boil the ocean in the one hour time and, and try to wrap up on time and feel free to, you know, uh, again, continue asking questions and commenting and chatting in the window. So with that, what I'd love to do is get you guys present and do a little, um, little exercise and to do this, I'm going to ask you to just find a position and place to sit. This will be like three or four minute little guided meditation. And uh, I'm going to actually walk you through a little five knowledge centers meditation that sometimes I use before I actually get into coaching. And so what I'm going to ask you to do with me is to find a comfortable position and to close your eyes. And I know, you know, maybe doing a guided meditation on a webinar is kind of uh, interesting, but let's see, let's just roll with it and see where it goes. So. I'm going to ask you just to close your eyes and slow down your mind a little bit and just become present in your body. Notice how you're sitting. If you're sitting in a chair, the weight of the chair or your weight is sinking into the chair, letting the chair hold you up. And as you sit in your space, I want you to just slowly start to bring your awareness to your breathing and start breathing through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you breathe in, take in some clean, fresh oxygen, hold it a little bit and then exhale. And as you breathe in, let your stomach expand. And as you exhale, let your stomach contract and wash away any concerns, anxieties you have from the day today. And just become a clear channel and let the breathing clear you out. And what I'd like you to do is bring your awareness to your mind, your head, the seat of your knowledge, the seat of your logic and reason. Just bring your awareness there. This knowledge center, this place that knows, that likes to analyze, to understand. And just check in with that part of who you are. And now slowly what I'd like you to do is adding on from the head, bring your awareness to your heart. And I'd like you actually to put your hand on your heart. So now I want you to connect with that part of you, which is the seat of your emotion, the seat of affection, the part of you that loves, that cares, the part of you that has feeling for your fellow human beings. And just check in what's in your heart right now. And so as you continue breathing, bringing online your head and your heart, just check in there, see what's there for you. And now what I want to do is bring your awareness to your stomach area, to your gut. And with your other hand, put your hand on your stomach. And notice your breathing of your stomach expanding as you breathe in and contracting as you exhale. And now as you continue doing this breathing, notice the connection of your head, your heart, and your gut. Your gut being that seed of intuition, that part of you that knows before your mind or your heart necessarily knows, instinctually knows what's next for you, where you need to go. And so now as you keep breathing, keep holding your head and your heart and your guts or holding your heart in your gut. I want you to bring your awareness to your pelvis, to your groin, to where you're sitting. That part of us that has the power to create life. 
part of us that ensures our survival as a species. That part of us that oftentimes gets taboo to talk about, that we don't sort of acknowledge, but it's there. And just connect with that part of who you are. So now bringing the head, the heart, the gut, and the groin all online. I want you now to notice your feet and your hands, the extremities. Bringing that part online of you that knows through doing, through action. Just check in and bring your awareness to those parts of you. And now with all these five knowledge centers, the head, the heart, the gut, the groin, and the hands, I want you now just to take in the environmental space you're in, the nature that you're in. In your room, notice the temperature. Notice the smell in the room and what's around you. That you are unique as an individual, but you're part of a larger ecosystem. You're part of a larger environment. And finally, as you do that, I want you just now to expand your awareness a bit to the people that are on this webinar. That you are independent, unique, but you are part of something larger today. This group of people that's joined together here to create some learning and some meaning out of today's session. Just take a final breath or two, and when you're ready, you can come back and open your eyes. And maybe what I'll ask you to do is in the chat window, share what's here for you right now. If you had to put one word on what's coming to you right now, what is it? It could be awkwardness, it could be peace, presence, great. Whatever it is for you, curiosity. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for sharing that. So just a little, um, a little fun exercise to get present, to get you uh, in the room and ready for the learning today. Sometimes when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'll spend a couple minutes just connecting into myself. One of the things we're going to be talking about today is Beyond just the head and the heart, the, you know, the cognitive intelligence and the emotional intelligence, we as human beings have other points of access that we can draw on, sources of knowledge, sources of power, and we can use those in our coaching. And in a, in a big one is really our bodies and learning to tune into what our bodies are telling us and actually using our bodies and physical movement even into our coaching. So with that, what I want to do is kind of pivot us in, and I'm going to pass this over to Pim to take us into the session. What he's gonna do is give us a quick walkthrough of the history of the five knowledge centers, and, uh, and then we'll kind of get it underway. So, okay, Ken? Cool. Thank you, Krista. Well, about uh, one and a half years ago, uh, I met up with Eric Cohn, and Eric uh, was my trainer about uh, 10 to, I think 12 years ago, when CTI came to the Netherlands, and I got trained by him as a, as a collective coach. Um, yeah, one and a half year ago, he contacted me because he knew that I was working in education. And he had a, uh, he asked me, "Are you still doing that?" And I said, "Yeah, I do." And he said, "What What are you exactly doing?" And then I shared a program with him that I developed for teachers in how teachers can benefit from coaching skills on a one on one level and also on a level in which they uh, can influence the climate and the learning in the classroom setting. And he got really interested in that, and we talked about that, and we wanted to take that to the States. But then I said, well, I've got something that's really more, far more interesting. Uh, lately, I've been coaching teachers who, um, who work on a ship, and the ship is a tall ship, it's called the Wilde Swan, and what that ship does, it sails with uh, students in the age from 15 to 18 around the world, and during six weeks, um, those children follow their school curriculum and uh, get all great experience on, uh, you know, to really have learn how to uh, cooperate, how to collaborate. So it's a fantastic program. Told him about that and then I said, you know, I would love to bring that program or a similar program to, uh, to 
to corporations or to do a, a coach training on board of a ship. And Eric got really, uh, um, yeah, you know, enthusiastic about it. And he said, well, is it okay if I share it with Krista? Because I'm just working with this guy, Krista, and he's amazing. And I think uh, that he, I think he would like it. And, um, well, what happened is Crystal loved the idea. Um, and I invited Eric to come over to, uh, to the Netherlands and we stepped on board of the World of Swan for, uh, for a couple of days, for five days. So did a trip and he got the experience for what it's like to be on a, on a tall ship. And, um, you know, tall ship is a, is a great environment to, to do trainings because, uh, it's a closed environment. You can't escape from a ship. You have to stay there. And you really can't hide who you are on a ship. And we saw a lot of opportunities there. So what happened, Eric went back to, um, to the States. Um, Krista joined us. And we started thinking about creating a, a coaching model that would be really cool. And it would be really something new um, than what we did before. And, you know, after a lot of thinking and collaborating, we ended up with, uh, with the five knowledge centers. And we got a first a, a, a kind of an outline. We, we tried it out actually uh, in Rotterdam. So we went back to, uh, to the Netherlands and trained uh, the captain and the crew of the Wilder Swan uh, in this model. And it was a huge success. And um, from there on, we really um, developed the model further and further. And we really, uh, yeah, it was kind of a laboratory actually where we uh, created some new stuff. So um, what we did, we created a program uh, that was called the Nautilus Experience. And uh, we did that program um, in April this year where we sailed from England to Portugal on board of the tall ship and we took leaders and coaches on board with us and we had a magnificent trip and um, well, we really um, we really loved what we did and we saw well, what we created there's a lot of potential in there so um, and what we noticed also was that it's you know the model is so simple and it's so fast so we created uh, a program which we call a rapid team formation in which we uh, train teams in our five knowledge centers and later on in this call Christopher will tell you some more about his experience with training teams with the five knowledge centers um, we also um, started thinking about developing workshops so uh, and webinars and uh, you know, so a lot of things happening. The the funny thing is, uh, it's really great to work with those with those two, two guys because uh, we meet five days a week for about one and a half hour, and uh, we work really intense. And you know, it's really amazing in you know what what we did in such a short while. So I don't know what's what's going to be next for us. Um, we are in. Uh, we are speaking with big corporations uh, uh, today. Eric and Chris had a great call with, with a Dutch company, and uh, well, we're hoping to uh, to really make this a, a great success. And one of the things we're going to do is, of course, uh, a training in November on the Five Knowledge Center. So you're more than welcome to join us. But for, first, let's hear some more about uh, yeah what what we created. Thanks for sharing that little um, history there, Pim. And um, so to, to piggyback on what Pim's been sharing, so we developed this model and we've been testing it out with teams in one-on-one -on -one coaching, leadership executive coaching and other types of coaching, and also in the training of coaches and also in leadership development. So in addition to the team piece, we'll talk a little bit later, some more storytelling about the application to a variety of settings. So we think the, the, the model uh, has a number of implications. But let's give you just a, a quick rundown of the framework. We're not going to, you know, belabor this, but just give you a little feel for this. So a, a lot of the inspiration for this came from <clears throat> a number of sources. Uh, one of them is, you know, there's been some buzz recently about what they've discovered in the human body that we actually don't have one brain in the human body, but we actually have three 
semi-autonomous nervous systems, one in the head, but we actually have brain tissue in our hearts, in our chest areas, as well as in our guts. And this was discovered over it back in the late 1800s and then kind of disappeared from science and resurfaced again about 10 years ago. But most of us have been brought up thinking that we only have one brain. It's the one that has the most you know, neurons and, and connections, obviously the cognitive and the cortex. But we do have these other parts of us that work as an integrated whole. And while they're semi-autonomous, they actually have knowledge and wisdom in them that we can tap into. And so as we started looking at stepping back we were inspired by books like uh, Reinventing Organizations by Frederick Leloux, who writes about one of the things as we move into modern organizations that are you know, based on new organizational designs is how do we actually create work in places and environments that bring the full human being to work? If you go into most companies today and you just sit back in as an observer, you see that we're, I think one of the ways you can describe what you see is a lot of intellect, a lot of people in their heads, right? We're using reason, logic, data, analytics to, de to describe, you know, or the tools to get through the day of work. You also notice, or one of the things I notice is a lot of the people sitting in the round of the room are really unhealthy, right? We're so overdeveloped in our heads. Our bodies are usually out of shape. You know, people look cranky. They're overworked, tired. You know, emotions kind of range of different kinds of emotions. But a lot of our organizational life really just taps into part of the human being. And so if we were to step back and think about how would you create a workplace that encourages bringing the full human being to work? What else would you want to tap into? What else are we leaving on the table? And so obviously emotional intelligence, you know, this knowledge center around the heart is something that's, you know, become a multi-billion dollar industry, but emotions and not only emotions at the individual level, but team level emotions. And I know we have somebody from the team emotional intelligence here on the, uh, the call today, an another assessment that I super highly recommend, uh, which I use often a lot, is what, is what are the emotions in a team and how do we actually use team emotions as a propeller of you know, uh, accelerating a team's performance and agility, et cetera. It's funny because there was a quote circling around on LinkedIn today by Jack Ma, who uh, was talking about how organizations of the future will be you know, heavily dominated by machines, but that machines will never bring IQ, EQ, and what he calls LQ, or the love quotient, that it's actually love that oftentimes differentiates us so much as human beings. And when we bring that to the workplace, you know, amazing, amazing things can happen around the engagement, around the sense of connection and meaning and purpose. So as we thought about our model, and just where this sort of model diagram came from, we were inspired by the Vitruvian Man by Da Vinci. And if you go back to the Vitruvian Man, which was created, I think it was in 1592 or so, there was this idea that within the human being is a microcosm of the universe and that everything that you can find in the universe, you can find in man. And that was part of what that, that represented. But so as we started thinking about the human being in our model, we wanted to think about how could we create a coaching model that taps into the head, taps into the heart. We also sort of looked at intuition and the guts. What is it in the gut that we know? Uh, the part of us that knows without sort of knowing cognitively. And by the way, as we started to develop this model, we started to think about what are some of the key questions that each knowledge center may tap into. So the, the question that oftentimes comes up for the head is what? What is the bottom line here? What's the essence? For the heart, it's about who? The connections, the people, the stakeholders, right? The emotional field of the team and the people that are here. For the gut, it's about where. Where are we going? What's next? What are our guts telling us about where we need to go? We also spoke about how, for many of us, we learn a lot through doing. And a lot of times through action, we then start to understand things. And so we don't necessarily need to go to the head, the heart, or the gut first, but sometimes just by doing and faster cycles of action and performance, we can learn faster. You probably remember when you learned how to ride a bicycle as a child. It took a lot of conscious effort, but eventually you got it into your body and your hands and your body knew what to do, such to the point you probably now can ride a bike, chew gum, talk on a cell phone all at the same time, right? Your body has a knowledge in it, a kinesthetic knowledge and wisdom. And, you know, it took us a little while to be willing to go to this final part, but, you know, part of who we are is as a species which has an incredible power to create life, right? This ability to survive and ensure the existence of our species. And, you know, we shied away, I think, at first about bringing the groin into the model because we thought, oh, that's never going to fly in corporate and, you know, people are going to really get 
itchy when we go there. But, you know, as we, we, we said, you know, if we're just really true and we want to bring the full human being to work, the groin is already there. It's used in marketing. It's, you know, we bring sexuality, you know, in a variety of ways. And as we talked about it more, and we had our fair share of adolescent banter about bringing the groin into our model, but, you know, we came to find is that there's a lot more to the groin than just the sexuality part of who we are. But it, again, it's this thing about existence and about, you know, ensuring our survival. And so if head is what, heart is who, gut is where, and hands is how, we thought about the groin really being about our why. Like, what's our fundamental purpose, our reason for being? As we started looking at our model, we then spoke about how human behavior is never separate from the ecosystem that we're a part of. So in the outside circle, we sort of uh, expanded that to encompass nature. And by nature, we mean environment, the market, the physical environment could be nature, it could be, but the ecosystem that a human being is never separate from the environment of which we live. And so that is how we got to, you know, this framework and started to go out and test it. And basically the bottom line is what we found was when we actually physically got people, individuals or teams walking into these knowledge centers and coaching them on it, something really magical happened. And within minutes, oftentimes we could get to the heart, no pun intended, of really what was there for a group or to the gut <laughs> or to the groin or whatever it was that really the, the team or the individual was, was grappling with. And so I see there in the, um, the chat window indeed. So yeah, I mean, one of the things that comes up when we get into the groin sometimes for people is around creation, this ability to create. Might be procreation, but as a species, our ability to be creative, to bring new things into existence, right? That's the entrepreneurial spirit to take something that doesn't exist to bring it in. In a lot of the coaching you do with in organizations, organizations are oftentimes under threat because of disruption and needing to innovate. And so I think the groin oftentimes coaching there oftentimes taps people into some fire to really kind of survive and, and really challenge themselves to step up their game a bit. So to bring this alive though, what we want to do is invite one of you who'd like to get some coaching today to come on the microphone and Eric is going to uh, lead us into a bit of a demo so you can experience some of the five knowledge centers in action. So Eric, do you want to uh, take it away? See if you can find well, a volunteer. Yeah, I I know I can find a volunteer. <laughs> okay. That's my intuition speaking here. <laughs> so maybe in the chat window, I don't know if somebody in the chat window wants to volunteer or, and by the way, we were on an uh, International Coaching Federation webinar recently and Eric uh, got a volunteer and she got a huge amount of value out of, out of it and got, you know, it was a 10 minutes of coaching and, it was really worth it. So I think if you volunteer, you'll get something good out of it. And she ended up writing a blog post, which we can share with you guys later if you want. Cyrus, raise his hand. Cyrus. Yes. Hello, Cyrus. How are you doing, gentlemen and ladies? I'm good. And thank you so much for uh, stepping up. Yeah. Okay. I just want to quickly uh, maybe do a little design here. Okay? Sure. Um, so, uh, we're going to just really go for it. This is going to be a, a, a short demo. So we're going to just really go for it. Is that okay? Absolutely. Wonderful. Um, can everybody hear Cyrus? Is, uh, 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 you're a little low for me. I can hear. Okay. All right. Great. I'll speak closer to the microphone. Okay, thanks. And don't, don't worry about it. If, if other people can hear, if, if I have to ask twice, that, that's only because I'm having a little hard time with that. Maybe I just need to, oh yeah, I'm going to make my volume a little louder. So what's something that you, that you really want to get coached on this morning? Um, that's a good question. Um, what about structure? Tell me about structure. So um, I uh, recently withdrew myself from the corporate world and uh, dived in two feet into, you know, completely in tapping into my creative um, whole self and um, collaborating and co-creating businesses, ideas. Um, and I have a lot of things going on at the same time and I just kind of starting to feel like it's becoming chaos. 
Yeah, you know, uh, just just to be transparent with the um, um, the rest of you, uh, I, I met Cyrus at a training, and uh, I know a little bit about you, Cyrus, and you're Mister Idea Man. You got like a idea minute. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the good news and the bad news is what I'm hearing. Yeah. 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 So, um, so are you willing to play with me here? I love to play. Okay, great. Go to your heart. Okay. It's funny when you went to your heart, I don't know if the rest of you heard it, but the phone rang. Something was, <laughs> something was ringing. Okay. Uh, so what is your heart actually? Well, rather than what, who are you in relation to this whole theme around structure? Who's Cyrus? Mm. I, feel, I feel like I'm a, uh, I feel like I'm an antibody for uh, structure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm this like little like atom or molecule floating around and I, the structure is good, but I feel like having a rigid structure might not be good for the system. And maybe I'm like that like little voice saying, hey, you know, don't be worried too much about structure. Let loose, let go, expand, become big. Yeah, what, what I'm actually hearing is uh, uh, a little bit of what me worry. You know that you know what you know Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine. Yeah, yeah, like like it's it's this is not about this is not about figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, great. Also, uh, what I'm hearing is it's kind of like you're acknowledging yourself that you're you are this force of nature. Yes, and it's not about it. Uh, it it, it, in, in fact, there, there's something about the chaos that you really enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let, let's move down to your gut. All right. And um, what's your gut telling you? Like, what's the vision? Like, the, the, so there is a yearning. You started off about uh, with structure. So there's some kind of yearning that you have. Uh, yeah, that a structure is um, a structure is not forced upon right. me or myself, but right. it, um, it's learned and um, absorbed to be a part of me rather than forced into me. I, I don't know if that makes sense. I think it makes a lot of sense. What what, what I'm picking up? Uh, so your intuition. And, and I, I think it's our intuition is, is, is uh, there's something around that like this is organically going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just it's, it's not. So, yeah. Yeah. Acceptance. Did you say that? Yes. So, yeah. So there's some acceptance here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, acceptance of what? Um of the present, of my, right. myself and the present. Um, and you said a word that's been ringing in my head since you said it was worried. You know, mm. worried about my structure, worried that I'm not on my path, worried that the things that I were taught in corporate by my dad, by my previous mentors, that I needed to be this, this, and this, and this equated to success. So, so, so we hear my, my, my intuition is telling me, so there's this voice inside of you saying, you need to have structure. <laughs> you need it. Yeah. Right. I, I feel the conflict inside of me that one part of me wants to expand and just yeah. move around. And then wow. part of me that says, hey, you need structure, otherwise you're going to be you know, all over the place. Exactly. And, 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 you know, you just moved into your hands. So let's go there. There was this kind of like, almost like flailing 
<laughs> motion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what are your hands telling you? Um, be active. I like. Yeah, you like being. You know, I, I remember when I met you, I thought it was basketball. My intuition said basketball, but it's actually hockey. Yeah. yeah. You know, so let's go into a hockey motion here. What, what, what is hockey telling you? What is hockey telling me? Um, balance. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about, yeah, tell me. And I, I noticed that you just moved your chair back. You, you like really got into it. There was something about, I don't know, balance and, and, and what? There's an, there was another piece. Uh, uh, like balance and fluidity. Yeah. There's yeah. a fluidiness to it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it was the, the, for the first time in my life, I actually saw the art of hockey when, when, when you went there. <laughs> that, that, that there's actually something uh, very artistic. Uh, you know, you need balance, you need flow, you also need drive. Yeah. Um, which kind of leads us into uh, your growing, the passion. You know, you say structure. What's actually the passion, though? Um, smiling. Smiles. Yeah, you got a great smile, by the way. Thank you. Look at that smile, man. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, what really drives me in any type of work, I've seen the common denominator between when I cook, when I bake, uh, playing hockey, um, coaching, corporate clients, technology. Right. Uh, that moment when something is done and I, it, 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 it makes somebody smile, it, 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 I, I feel connected to. Yeah, there's, and, and, yeah. There's, yeah, so there's something that you're yearning for here too. What are you yearning for? For myself or for society? I don't know, you tell me. Uh, healing. Healing. Society and myself, everybody. Yeah. So healing, let's, uh, I think this is a great opportunity to bring in nature because uh, uh, there's something about the, uh, uh, what is nature telling you around all of this? Uh, nature is telling me that um, it's sick. Mm. Warming, you know, you know when, when we get sick as human beings, our body temperature rises and we get fevers and it's kind of... Uh, Analogous to what's happening to Earth right now with global warming, it's getting sick. Something's not right. Something's there's, not right. Now, so there's there's a fever rising, is what yeah, I'm hearing. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. and and what you're about is is actually being part of the uh, the healing process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So we've been. Ex what was that? I, I definitely feel feel that. Yeah. And 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 I uh, you're. You're not only feeling it. This is my senses. Everyone on this call right now is feeling it. That there's something universal that you're tapping into. At least that's what I'm making up. And back to you. We've been exploring these knowledge centers. And you've been getting a lot of information over the last, I don't know, seven, eight minutes. Yes. Let's go to your head for a second. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm being brave right now. Okay? Yes. I'm being very, very brave. And, and also I'm trusting. I'm trusting that your other knowledge centers actually have informed you enough that you can actually go into your head and actually come up with, uh, uh, with the answer. Around structure, given everything that you've just uh, explored, what's the next step? Hmm. So you started off with the heart. With the heart and, and who you are. Right. And then we went into the gut, which was... Which was... Eh! What me worry? Yeah, just no worry. Yeah. And then uh, the hands. The hands, which was kind of like led us into uh, uh, 
the physicality of who you are. Yeah. Like that's such a big part of who you are, Cyrus. Yeah. Con con constantly keep on moving forward. You know? Yeah. And that kind of goes in with, yeah. What's next for me is, um, keeping myself busy and, and not letting myself stop. And I don't mean, you know, like a shark that keep, actually maybe like a shark, a shark that needs to keep on moving. Otherwise it dies. Right. That that's just the way the nature of um, how a shark works. Um, if, if I, if I stop and I start analyzing too much and I get into this analysis paralysis, I, I stop and then I, I start feeling it in other parts and then, you know, who I am starts getting doubted and questioning myself and my gut starts saying like, um, uh, it, well, I, I guess that it's- so I'm gonna intrude. Yeah. This is what I'm hearing, Cyrus. You're gonna trust your body. Yeah. And you're gonna be the shark. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna trust that that's actually gonna create what's next for you and, and what's next for you in the world. Right. Um, what's next for me is to, uh, I, I, I'm not necessarily a religious person, uh, right. but I have uh, faith, but I never talk about it. It's always been kind of like a taboo subject for me. And you know, like my parents were not religious. I didn't grow up that way. Right. Um, I've, I, I never thought about it actually, but uh, I think what's next for me is to have faith. And I'm not talking about like, faith in you know an entity or, or something specific or doctrine um, I get it. But, but but just faith in in cyrus yeah. you had me at faith got it <laughs> <laughs> you did i'm serious that resonates big time yeah so i'm gonna give you a little homework right okay I want you to spend one minute, just one minute a day, meditating on faith. Okay. Will you do that? Yes, and I will email you so you know I did it every day. Fantastic, <laughs> which is great. You know, this is the great thing about coaching, because now I get to do it myself on a daily basis. <laughs> so listen, uh, thank you very much. You were just an exquisite client. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to your emails. <laughs> yeah, on a daily basis. Okay, good. We're going to be in contact a lot. I, I would give <laughs> you a big hug for um, a person, but here's a digital hug. <laughs> All right. A hug back. Thank you, man. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome job, guys. Um, maybe you. just to give you a, a second to breathe a bit. You know, I think there's a couple little comments in the chat window here just around uh, Gestalt theory and practice. JD mentioned, uh, Kelly says, amazing to watch. So maybe we could just take a couple minutes to quickly debrief this. You know, this was like 10 minutes or so, a little bit more than 10 minutes, 12 minutes or so of coaching. And um, maybe we could start off with you, Cyrus. Maybe I just ask you just general, what was it like? like to be connected to your different knowledge centers and anything that comes to you. Or what was that like? Just kind of separating out those parts of you, you know, cause they're all together. But one of the things the knowledge centers framework does is it kind of gets you to get in touch with each of them one at a time to, you know, split them out, but then reintegrate them again. I'm curious, what, what was that like for you? Right. So, um, by, by trade, I'm an economist and, uh, you know, technologist. Mm -hmm. So, Really logical and everything like that, and um, I, I, I think everything is all just here. Yeah. And and you, you mentioned earlier on the webinar that you know there's pieces of like brain tissue or neurons you know throughout our body, mm -hmm. uh, and I, it's, it's not that I didn't believe you. I just said, okay, that's nice information. I'll look it up at some point. <laughs> Again, I have an article for you if you want. So. <laughs> uh, but as I was going through this, I, it, it kept on that, that, that mention you made that um, in the web webinar earlier, as I started bringing awareness, because I, I understand self-awareness, but this was actually a level deeper than just self-awareness. It was, you know, awareness within my awareness, um, awareness or what, what do 
what you would call it. But when I started bringing the attention to my heart, um, I started feeling a different energy flow through my body. Mm-hmm. And then once I moved into my gut, another energy started flowing through my body. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, I started to kind of see that I'm much more than I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though it's all already been here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's a, to me, what's happening, it sounds like it's you're unblocking certain channels that you weren't opening up, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's an awakening. Right. Cool. Nice. Eric, do you want to chime in a little bit about your experience being on the other side of it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, uh, it was just another example to me of that the whole is bigger than the sum of its parts. That uh, um, act, and, and in order to get to that, we had to go to different parts, mm. but the one connected to the other. So first we separated it, uh, so that it could become a whole. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Well, it was beautiful to watch. And I, I love where you ended up, you know, in this place of faith, you know, which wasn't where we started. Right. It, and so I think that's the beauty And, you know, I think one of the things we talk about, I was just releasing a podcast earlier today and I was listening to it again before I release it. And the the guy on my podcast was talking about coaching emergence, right? So coaching to allow what is wanting to emerge in a person. And I think if we're coaching for problem solving or for coaching to prescribe or give advice, we're kind of crowding the space and we're blocking what is naturally wanting to emerge in that person or that team. And I think what sort of was beautiful to watch you guys just by going like on a journey through the five knowledge centers, I'm sure Eric didn't know where it was going to end up, but just trusting that in the client, tapping into those, the way forward will be. be As a matter of fact, I just want to add that there was a section uh, for me where actually internally I was going, I have no idea where this was going. (laughs) Um, and, and, And right away, there was another voice going, great. That's exactly where coaching needs to happen, mm-hmm. in the unknown. Yep. So um, I, I'm curious, anybody other, have any other comments before we move on? Yeah, there's a question here from Kelly around Cyrus. Does it, did it feel like your faith has been wanting to emerge? Um, there have been internal indicators within my body uh, but then again, my awareness wasn't here or here or down here. Uh, sorry, I won't show you guys on the screen, but um, it, it all has been, you know, you know, it has to be here. So um, I think my faith um, it, it is is not located in my head, but it's somewhere else, and it's yeah, I'm going to explore that definitely. Mm. Great, that's cool. So. Um, I'm going to just kind of pivot on. We have about 10 minutes left. And I know some folks are leaving and we wanted to cover a couple of other things. And this actually addresses JD's question. So we have some learning resources to tap into this more. You just got a little taste today, but we have podcasts, articles, videos you can watch. Um, we actually have a training coming up in November, which we're really excited about. You know, we originally piloted this, as Pim mentioned earlier, on a tall ship, which was mind blowing. But, you know, uh, we all can't get out on ships all the time. So we're going to be doing one in New York City. And we got some great information on that. We'd love for you guys to check it out. And we're excited to see, you know, where we're going to cook this. But um, in a little bit of the time we have left, and I can pivot that back to you. And I'm happy to share this deck with anybody who registered for the session today, if you want some of the links and all that, um, is to share just a, a couple of little stories about how else we've been using the Five Knowledge Centers framework. And so I think what Eric gave you was a really nice demo of just doing a quick session in 12 minutes you know, right here with uh, one person. Uh, Another area that we've been using it in has been in team coaching. And uh, I just actually released a a, a blog post two days ago about something we call rapid team formation. And the blog post is called Rapid Team Formation, colon, creating psychological safety and enhancing agility using the five knowledge centers. And so I spent a lot of my time coaching teams. And one of the things, you know, I've been doing that for like 15 or more years. And One of the things I found as I started to experiment with the five knowledge centers is that while a lot of my work with teams was experiential, a lot of times it would take a day or two to really create real conversations and where people were getting real and I think where psychological safety was really being established or 
we could get the team past the fear of their threats or their concerns about coming together to really, you know, really get into becoming a real team and starting to, to, you know, get excited about their journey together. And so as I started experimenting more with the five knowledge centers and moving teams physically through the five knowledge centers, I was struck at how sometimes in the first 90 minutes or two hours of a one day, a half day, one day or two day team session, we could really rapidly get teams to the heart of what was most salient in that team. And we discovered this, you know, when we're out on the tall ship, we call it, we like to call the five knowledge center framework, like a Ouija board that it brings to the surface what is there that's hidden. And I'll give a quick example of that. I was recently coaching a finance team and uh, I had them take an assessment. It actually was the team emotional intelligence survey. It's one of the assessments I really like. Another one, the team diagnostic survey. And starting off, what we'd like to do is meet people in the head that in order to earn the right to advance to getting teams or groups into their hearts, into their guts, into their groins, their hands, et cetera, it's important to meet them in the head. So I and, you know, liken this to the idea of downshifting in a car, to slow down before you speed up. So slow sometimes is fast. So assessments can be helpful for that. Deployed this team assessment on them, got them in the session, did some kind of presencing exercise, icebreaker, and then fed them back the data briefly and just used two rounds of talking stick, having a talking stick go around where each team member shared their reactions to the team assessment data. As you can imagine, after the two rounds, a lot of the comments were in the head, that they're intellectual comments about what stood out for them, what they didn't understand, what they thought was interesting. And so as we were doing this in this finance team, I just checked in with my body. And this is one of the things the Five Knowledge Center's training really has taught me a lot, is that my body has a lot of wisdom in it, if I can learn to listen to it and trust it. And when I checked in with my body, my body was sad. And I was totally happy going into that team coaching session. But when I checked into my body, my body was like depressed. It felt like I was at a funeral. And I just blurted to the team. I just let my gut speak without filtering it. I said, thank you guys all for sharing. And I just have to say, for whatever word, the word that's coming to me is, around, is grieving. I feel like there's some sadness in this team. And I don't know what it is, but I feel like there's sadness here. And that's what it is. I then sort of moved to coaching the leaders of this team in front of the group. So I invited them up to the front. I introduced the five knowledge centers. And I, we, I just want to interrupt for a second because yeah. I think that there's something really key that you brought up is sure. that as, as the coach, you came from your heart when mm -hmm. you said that. I feel sadness. And gut. And gut. My exactly. gut was, was saying something, yeah. But yeah. My, oh. it was both of those, gut and uh, heart. Yeah. So uh, anyways, I brought the, the, the there were six, uh, five team leaders, uh, uh, senior leaders. I brought them up and coached them fishbowl style in front of the team and moved them to the heart, the gut, the groin, the hands, et cetera. And sure enough, when we went to the heart, here's what, they, what was discovered. And this didn't, hadn't come up before is one of their team members had passed away four months before and they had lost a senior member of their leadership team that went to another company, to another firm. And so there was like loss in this team Anyways, we kind of did the coaching on the five knowledge centers for 20 minutes, moved them around. And I really like to bring leaders, whether it's one team leader or if it's a leadership team up front while others sit around in a circle. Because what happens is leaders then can model the vulnerability that leads to the kind of interpersonal risk taking, which leads to the kind of learning and then breakthroughs that we need to get great performance. So invited the leaders to sit down, brought the team up, walked them through the five knowledge centers as well. And by the time we got to 90 minutes in the session, we had really cracked the nut on what was most needed in this team, which was taking a moment to grieve some loss. And then we pivoted into a really exciting time where we started envisioning what was next for them. But in order to move forward, they needed to kind of spend some time together as a team to have some catharsis. And Anyways, that's just a little bit of a flavor of a recent story. I've, I've got a bunch of these. Uh, another quick one, I was with a leadership team in the retail sector, and they're getting majorly disrupted. They're in uh, fashion uh, by Amazon, because Amazon is like disrupting uh, you know, retail and fashion. People are shopping online. So these people's business is on the line. So they had brought together 35 people to form a new big, large team to kind of crack the code on this. And so I had 35 people sitting in the room. I brought the six leaders up 
and we went through the head, the heart, the gut, and then I took them to the groin. And we got to the groin. So imagine six of us are standing up in the middle of the room and there's like 35 people sitting around the outside. It was like a pin dropped when we went to the groin. And my first instinct was to say, oh, it's probably because we're in the groin. Everybody's uncomfortable because we're in the groin. And I just checked to the room and I paused the coaching and I went out to the room. And I said, something just changed in the room. What's here? It's like a pin could drop. And one of the people in the audience said, well, our very existence is on the line and we really want to hear what these leaders have to say. And it was this turning point in the coaching where everything got really real and what was on the line was their very survival. Anyways, you know, in two and a half hours, we did this coaching. We created a team charter with them as a group about coming up with a clear why they needed to be a team at this time. And then sub team charters for five sub teams all in like two and a half hours. So anyways, just a little flavor for some stories from the team coaching space. Uh, you know, there's a lot more to share on that, but just to give it a little bit of a flavor. I know we're kind of running towards the end and I just wanted to briefly give Eric a chance to talk about how he's been bringing this into leadership development programs. And if you could share a quick anecdote and for those of you who need to leave early, feel free to pop out, but we'll probably stay on for a few more minutes if you, if you're able to continue. Well, um, I've been bringing, um, a program called whole mind, fully embodied leadership, uh, uh, into this, uh, a large consulting company for, for many, many years, but I redesigned it this, this year. Um, and uh, I don't know uh, how many of you know about consulting companies, but talk, I mean, talk about being in the head. Uh, most consulting companies are uber head people. Uh, and and uh, 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 I, I based the, uh, the, the, the whole program, I redesigned and based it on the five knowledge centers. Uh, so you can imagine uh, the resistance that uh, that I initially received. And, and by the second day of the training, I actually, uh, I, I challenged the group, you know, because they were resisting so much. Uh, I challenged them. There was an exercise where I, I took them, uh, it, it was called Childhood Hero, and it was all about getting in touch with uh, a, a hero that they had from the past, and they were moaning and groaning and they didn't want to do it because it was childish and uh, all of this. And, and I basically said to them, uh, excuse my French, but I basically said to them, this will change your fucking life. Do it. Right. <laughs> and there was one guy in particular that said, uh, this is not going to, you know, really do anything, but I'll go along. And he had his childhood hero was, uh, Michael Jordan, right? And once he started getting into it, uh, he just had fun. And we really started exploring the five knowledge centers from this childhood hero. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the piece that really, really resonated with him was Michael Jordan's passion. So I want to fast forward. Uh, uh, I got an email from him uh, recently where he said, I went in. Uh, like I said, he's a consultant, so a lot of times he's on what they call pitch teams. You know, they're proposing something to a company. Uh, he's, and he just wrote a quick note and said to me, uh, we just had this big multi-million dollar pitch. I came in as Michael Jordan, and we nailed it. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So um, I, I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is that uh, – even Uber consultants, uh, once they get this model, it can be transformational. Mm -hmm. What I love in your story there, Eric, is around getting into playfulness, right? And yeah. um, we know when we can get into a state of play, we can really, you know, tap the right brain. We can be more creative. We're more resilient. We're more able to deal with stress. We're more innovative. And so I think there's something powerful about getting playful. And I think we've commented on that in some of our team meetings, like some of the jokes about the groin and such. Uh, aside from the adolescence that we tap into, it actually creates energy and fun and playfulness. Uh, so there's, I think, something there about tapping into the playfulness. And exactly. again, I think the, the power of the five knowledge centers, there's something in the simplicity of it, but the depth that you can go to and the speed. And I think that's one of the things we've sort of really um, been struck by 
is, uh, you know, it's a great tool to have in the toolkit. I think it can be used in, in whole or part and it, uh, it generates results. And, you know, for me, I've just struck, it's like kind of, I don't want to like be cocky or arrogant or something, or, but say it's been like batting a thousand, like every team I've gone into or a leader, it's like been like powerful, like the Ouija board thing. And, you know, at first I think I was struck by how quickly it worked to surface things. I was used to taking a half day or a day to get to the heart of things. And now it's sometimes like five, 10 minutes yeah. you know, coaching with the leader up front. Suddenly it's like, bam, you're right there. We don't need these long windups. Yeah. Taylor, anything you want to add? Yeah, well, well, yeah. well I, I did to that. You know, I'm, I'm amazed about the simplicity of the model every time I use it. And I'm amazed about the profoundness. It's really deep and um, it's fast. And uh, what, what I'm noticing is the same as what you are noticing, you know. Um, coaching sessions with teams that will normally cost me two days, I could do in half a day now. Uh, on a personal one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching um, it's really incredible uh, how fun it is and uh, how successful it can be. I want, I want to highlight something. We're not suggesting that you just need to do half-day interventions. What we're saying is that you can get done uh, in a half-day what usually takes two, which will leave you for a much richer yeah. ongoing coaching experience. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, definitely. So folks, I want to be respectful of everyone's time and, uh, you know, want to thank folks for joining in today. And again, you know, if you want to learn more, we'd send you over to teamcoachingzone.com forward slash five knowledge centers. We've got great stuff there. There's some podcasts some blog posts, articles. We've got some great videos of the tall ship experience, a couple of two minute YouTube videos you can check out. And, um, yeah, would love to see you guys in New York. If you can join us, we're going to be doing this great three-day session in New York. And um, yeah, good things to come. So hope you got some value out of today and you can take something away, hopefully practically, that you can just use immediately in your own coaching and uh, would love to stay in touch with you. We'll linger around here in case anybody has any final questions or just wants to chat. And um, But formally, thanks again for joining today and this uh, ends this webinar on the five knowledge center. So take care. Thanks for joining everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.